Welcome back to my Grid Trader series. In the last video, I explained that I have had a number of suggestions along the lines of setting a range where you don't buy above the top of the range and don't sell below the bottom of the range. And in the last video, I implemented that as a manually entered range, which I think is a good idea because you can adjust that according to your own market insights on a regular basis. But I also said there were different variations to that. And one variation is to use some kind of trend indicator. So for example, a moving average might be set so that you don't buy above the moving average or sell below the moving average. Uh, basically, it's a return to the mean type approach for the grid trader. So today I'm going to actually write the code for that. I'm going to use two different moving averages. One will be uh, where I set the high limit and one set the low limit. If you've just started watching with this video, I am building on code that has already been created in earlier videos. There is a playlist for the entire series, but you don't need to watch every video just to get to the beginning point here because many of the videos simply implement a suggestion and then I go back to the base code again to start with the next. There will be a list in the description to the video that shows how you can get to this particular video through the stages of actual code development. So if you want to just go through from the beginning and see how this code has been developed, check that list in the description and then you can watch just those videos. I'll also mention that for this version 2.010 that I've got on screen here, I found an error while I was making the video and I actually corrected it in the video, but that correction didn't make it onto GitHub. So if you download it and something's not working, uh, go back and download again from GitHub because I've already fixed that. So let's move straight on to making this new version, which I'm going to call 2.011 because it's based on 2.010 and there aren't too many things that I need to do. Uh, this will initially be just for MT5, but later in the video, I'll also make a 012 version, which will work for MT4. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually create the uh, 2.011 version. In the usual way, I'm just going to copy the folder and then just change this line. Now I have made the changes and I've got a version 2.011 here. Haven't done anything else with it other than change the version number, the comments and the magic number. If I'm going to use an indicator in MT5, then I need handles for that indicator. And I also need the inputs. So let's just do the inputs first. So I'm going to be using a moving average for this that has a period and a time frame. I'm just going to use simple moving average. I don't have an input for that because I'm not going to worry about it. But if you want to, you can add inputs for things like the, uh, the type of moving average that you want to use and even which of the prices you might want to use. But I'm going to be using the high price moving average for the upper range and the low price moving average for the lower range. For MetaTrader 5 then, I need a handle for the indicator and because I'm using two different indicators, or the same indicator but I'm running on two different price types, then I'm going to have two handles. And then here in the trading range, this is the, I'll just call that the moving average trading range, uh, I'm going to first create those two handles. Now, because I'm using handles, I don't want to use this set range value. That was for a fixed range value. I'm going to go back into the leg base and add another function for that. I'm going to leave the range value in there because if I don't use it, it doesn't hurt. I'm just going to add two more values, which would be the handle and the buffer number. I've also added an index there just in case you want to use this to get uh, other than bar number zero or one. I'm going to always be using bar one in my example, but I've added that there. And then I need a method to set these values. If I go down here where I've already 
got the sit range value. That's all I need to do in the leg base. Just make sure that compiles. And now back in main, I'm not using set range value and I don't have this input anymore, so I need to remove that, but I'll just change it to set range indicator. So for the buy leg, I'm passing in the handle high, so I won't be buying above that. And for the sell leg, I'm passing in the handle to the low indicator. I won't be selling below that. It's a moving average indicator. It only has one buffer, buffer number zero. And I'm going to be getting the value from bar number one. That's the bar that's just closed. You could change this to a zero if you want to get the current in. And that's almost everything I need to do. I just need to change the leg now. So in the leg, I already have is range okay, passing in double price but it uses the range value, which I'm not using now that I've got an indicator range. So first I check if the indicator handle is equal to invalid handle, then I don't really have an indicator I can use, so I'll just return false. Then I declare an array double value. I'm only going to be using one element from the array, but the copy buffer function fills an, ar an array, so I need an array there. Uh, handle, the buffer number, the indicate or the index, the bar number that I want. I only want one value, so I'm just getting that one back. Puts it into value and if the result from that is less than one, it means I didn't get any values back. And so I will just then return false. And then I go into the standard, uh, if the price is greater than value zero, return false, otherwise return true. That should be everything, but I've just remembered as reading this that I really should initialize these values in the leg base. So just initializing all of the values, I'm setting it up with an invalid handle, an invalid buffer number, and an invalid index. So it shouldn't work unless you actually set those values. Let's test this and see. Running grid trader EX5, everything is the same there. If I go to the inputs, I have a 20 day moving average. I'm gonna change this to a 200 hour, just for the demonstration. Um, and that's mainly for visuals. So, if I run this in the strategy tester with a uh, daily moving average, it actually opens up two windows, one to show the indicator and one to show the expert running because one of them's on a one hour and the indicator would be on a one day. It just, it's harder to see what's happening that way. So I'm just going to change to a 200 hour instead, buy and sell, and then we'll start and I'll just see something's happening. I've just stopped it at a point here and you can see all I have are buy trades because I am below this high moving average and I'm below the low moving average so it's not selling anymore. Uh, you can see down here there are no sell trades left behind. So this will continue, it will close the buy trades until it gets above that line and then it will no longer be buying. Now I've just pulled it up there because the price went into this range between the two moving averages and you can see that I actually do have a buy and a sell there. So it is doing both. And now I've paused it again. The price is above both of the moving average lines. I only have sell trades, all the buy trades are gone. So this is another take on the method for avoiding those outlier trades. And it automates the setting of that price range by using the moving average. These are not very far apart. The high and low moving average are very close together. You can choose something else if you like. You can see in the code where all I did was create the indicator handle and then pass that into the leg and it deals with the high and the low values from that. Uh, next, I'll just run this through as a full test to see what the result comes out at. The test is finished. If I look at the back test results here, that was a net profit of 3,670.
the base grid trader with uh, no enhancements to minimize the outlier trades uh, gave a profit of 5,021, so slightly reduced profit. The drawdown though is also reduced at 329. So here I have the baseline chart at the top and the chart from the 200 moving average at the bottom and I can see that the shapes are very similar but that the equity curve is also much closer to the balance curve which means I haven't got as much outstanding at any one time and so the swap should be less. I have no idea if the swap makes up for the lower profit or not but it is a reduction in the swap. The drawdown is also less. Let me bring up a table where I have all the results so far. So on this table, I have still have the base at the top because it has the highest profit and the absolute drawdown is within my nominal $1,000 limit. But the next in line is this version 2.011 with a range based on a 200 moving average and a profit of 3,670, absolute drawdown 329 and a maximum drawdown of 1,312. And that puts it significantly ahead of the other two with the equity close at 10 and the take profit and stop loss options. So this looks like a good option. It's uh, kind of middle of the road, less profit, but also safer in terms of drawdown and max drawdown. So I'll add this to the table of results and you can decide whether this is a worthwhile thing to do. And obviously if you change the indicator that you use or the values for that moving average, you're going to get different results. But this does reduce the drawdown at some of the expense of the total net profit. But still, if, as I've mentioned before, you're using the leveraged account from xrating.com, this is 367% profit over 15 months. And just before I leave, I'll now convert this for MetaTrader 4. The reason I didn't do this all in one hit, because the way that MetaTrader 5 and MetaTrader 4 handle indicators is quite different, and I didn't want to have a lot of conditional code. I'm going to now show a technique to use this on MetaTrader 4 that also works on MetaTrader 5. It's just that I prefer what I've done here for MetaTrader 5. So step one, I'm going to create a version 2.012. And now I should be actually doing this in the MetaTrader 4 editor. So I'll go to that and uh, continue with this edit. Now I'm in the MetaTrader 4 editor. You can see the .mq4 file simply opens gridtrader.mq5. This is the one that I just edited. It will run version 2.012. Now to get the indicators, if I just open up main again, this will simply not work in MetaTrader 4. The function IMA is quite different, doesn't return a handle, it returns an actual value and the arguments are different. So I can't just compile this. If I try, I get errors. To make this work, I'm going to use something that is supplied with MetaTrader 4 and also with MetaTrader 5. If I go to the include files, there's an indicators folder here that's supplied automatically with MT4 and 5. And in here, there is a trend.mqh. Now trend.mqh holds a class CIMA. I'll just find that. And this class is for access to the moving average indicator. So I'm actually going to use those classes because they exist in both MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5. Internally they operate differently but the interfaces to them are the same so I can use it in both 4 and 5. So then I go to the main, I will go to this config file which is where I'm putting all of my external includes and in here I'm going to include that trend.mqh file. Now trend.mqh will itself include this file, this indicator.mqh, which contains the parent C indicator class. Now there are some things in this code that I haven't kept up to date for MetaTrader 4, so I'll just go and fix those quickly. The first is that for MetaTrader 4 I have the position info mql4 file and I've included this enum enum position type. I'm going to move that into the common enums file. And that's because now I've added, or earlier I added this trade direction position type buy and sell, and because they weren't defined, I would get an error there. And the other thing that I've done is to create this functions file, which has an is trade allowed. That is only required for MetaTrader 5 because MetaTrader 4 already has an inbuilt is trade allowed function. So all I need to fix that is to block that out. I could leave these handles, but I don't need them, so I'm just going to remove them for this version. But I do need objects of type CIMA.
and then instead of setting the handles, I'm going to create new instances of these two objects. The new statements for these don't actually set them up. The objects are just created as empty objects and I haven't passed any information to them, all of this information. So there is a create function then on each. So the create function simply sets up all the usual values, the symbol, the time frame, period, uh, the shift, moving average method, and the price. The set range indicator was passing in a handle high, but I don't have that anymore. I have actual indicators. So what I'm going to do is create another function to store these indicator objects. I'll leave everything I have so far because this leg base is a common file but I'm now going to add a range indicator object. Uh, I really should include that C indicator. And now I need a function to set the indicator object. Just copy this. The arguments are very similar, but in this case I'm passing in the indicator object. I still need a buffer number and an index, although, as I said before, for the moving average the buffer number is always going to be zero, but to make this flexible to use with other types of indicators. I think that's all I need to... oh no, I must also remember to initialize the indicator object. And then in main I change this set range indicator to object. And because I am creating two objects, I need to delete them when I'm finished. And then the final step should be to update the leg so that it uh, actually uses that object. So I don't want the M range indicator handle. So value is no longer an array, I'm getting a single value back. I call mRange indicator object.refresh, which is not necessary for the MT4 version, but it is for the MT5 version just because of the way the indicators are handled. And then I just call get data with the buffer number and the index number, and that gives me the value of that single point on the indicator. And then this comparison is the same. If the price is greater than the value, return false. And if I fall through to this point, return true. I think that should be everything I need. Let's go to MetaTrader 4 and just run that to see that it's working. Okay, I won't run this all the way through, but I can see here that the price is down low and I don't have any sell trades there, only the buy trades. So this is doing the right thing for MetaTrader 4 as well. This same code, as I said, works for MetaTrader 5 because those classes already exist. They've been created by MetaQuotes. So you can use this. I just think that the earlier version is more appropriate for MetaTrader 5, but if you want something compatible, then use the version 012. That's all I have now. The next video will show how to adapt this to use oscillator type indicators. Uh, there is a slightly different technique for those, won't take very long to show, and I'll be back with that soon. If you have suggestions for how we can improve the grid trader, then please leave them in the comments and I'll try to get through as many of those as I can. Thank you for watching.